Welcome back. Now we're becoming familiar with Docker images and Docker containers and uh, using the terminal to issue some Docker commands, to run a container, to list uh, the containers that we've used before, run a container interactively and run a container in the background and uh, list the images that, um, that we've got and we've seen that Docker run tries to find um, the Docker image locally. If it doesn't find it, then it downloads it from Docker Hub. Let's try now and build our own containers. So we hopefully now understand the difference between an image and a container. We mentioned before an image is like a class, a container is like an instance of that class. And the way we're going to do this now, we're going to do this interactively. Uh, there's two ways of of, uh, of creating Docker containers, uh, building Docker images. Uh, we can do that interactively or we can do that automatically. In this video, we'll do it uh, 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 interactively and then we'll learn to do it automatically. So doing it automatically is much, much better and, uh, and, and faster as well. So let's go ahead and um, see the last Docker container we ran. It was this, the, the, the clock one and list the ones that uh, the containers that we've used before so minus a these are the ones that uh, we've, 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 we've used before and then list the images that we have in our system docker images so we've got ubuntu uh debian jesse if you remember that the busy box and the clock image so let's try and go into the and run the Ubuntu one, so run the Ubuntu container interactively and run bash. Yeah, now we're inside it. If you remember, we tried to install the wget tool, so if we try it, it's not there now. What we can do is uh, let's update the list of packages first and list the repositories that we've got. Do an apt-get update, it'll take a few seconds to update, and then Let's install the wget tool or maybe some other tools and commit those and create our own image from this and uh, this image. So one thing you will notice here is that we always need a base image to build on, right? That's finished. Let's install uh, get install wget. We always need a base image. Yes. To build on, right? So here our base image is this very basic Ubuntu image, and then we can uh, we can create these layers on top of it. We can add these tools to it, and then create an image from there, as um, as we will see in a few moments. Let's install maybe another tool, like for example, I don't know. I mean, if the it has the curl tool, no, it's not there. So let's install it as another tool as well. Yeah, it's not too big. Thirteen megs, thirteen point nine. So as we mentioned, we'll do the we'll create the we'll build the image uh, uh, interactively, but the better way is to do that um, automatically, right? Uh, so we've run the, the 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 Ubuntu image, we've installed the wget and curl tools, and now what we can do? Let's just double check if we uh, if we exit this container, if we try to compare. This latest container that we've had, we compare it with the original image. What we can do is we can do Docker. I'm sorry, let's just get its ID first. Docker PS minus L. Give me the latest one that we've run. And the ID is this. So let's copy that. And then what we can do is Docker diff. And if we pass it the container ID, it will compare the, this latest container we, that we ran with its base image with the Ubuntu image that didn't, didn't have the wget and the curl tool. So what you can just give the first three characters of the container ID. And as you can see, there's a big difference between the two, right? That uh, the A tells us that we've added these things when we installed the two tools, yeah? Uh, in fact, if we count how many packages it has now, oh no, I'm actually inside it, so we can do that, we can do that when we're inside it. <laughs> Yeah, so what happens here is, as we explained before, that a Docker image is read-only, so the image is read-only, but 
when we make changes, we make them in the copy of that image. So we make them in the container, right? And Docker can show us the difference between the base image and its uh, its the, 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 its copy, uh, the, meaning the container that we have actually uh, 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 ran, the, the, the actual container. Now, to commit those changes and make a new image and build a new image of our container, we can simply do docker commit and then we pass our uh, ID. I've actually forgotten the ID 40C. This is the first 40C. This is the first three letters. If we do that, Docker, what will Docker will do now? Yeah, it has committed the new changes to the container and created an image out of it. Yeah, so if we now, and this is um, this is the ID of of our newly created image, and if we want to run it, so we can do Docker uh, run run it interactively minus ID, and now we provide maybe the first three uh, the first three characters of the image ID, which is this one. Yeah, this is our image ID, and run bash. Hopefully, our image now will have the wget tool, as you can see, and will have the curl tool that we've installed into that container. I hope that this makes sense now that we run a container, we install tools, and then we use the docker commit command to create or build an image out of that container. So I hope this is uh, making sense. I'm sorry, uh, earlier before, uh, I think I spoke about this and said this is not the image con uh, the image ID. No, th this it is and the image ID. I apologize for this simple mistake. Uh, I think we can actually going to tagging images okay let's stop here and then do that do that in in, in the next video